way down there is James Payne, a director of Documentaries Extraordinaire. You may know James from films such as Far Western or Okie Noodling, and someday maybe SV Seeker. But James's project today is to build a gate to keep his little darling girl from running out into the street. Isn't that right? That's right. Parenting through steel. I like it. <laughs> And this is a great project that almost anybody can do. It's just a uh, thin wall, two inch square tubing. And it's great for doing shelves. It's great for doing gates. It's doing uh, lawn furniture, uh, structural. You can make go-karts out of this stuff. It's fantastic stuff. Now you will need to cut that stuff. And the old bandsaw from Harbor Freight I've had for years is a fantastic bandsaw. And it's cheap. The other gadget is a porter band. I got one of these too. This is fantastic. Not cheap. And the third way is another <laughs> DeWalt gadget, but you can just put this on any old power grinder and use the DeWalt cutoff wheel. Thin and only good really for cutting. Don't use it for grinding. Yep, it's gonna need an angle grinder. And I have a whole collection of things, but you only really need one and two different types of disc, actually three. This is a Cubitron grinding disc and it really does eat some steel off there. It's great for if you're gonna paint, it's gonna leave a deep gouge, which leaves uh, something for the paint to grab to. That's called a profile. This disc, a flap disc, is good for polishing things up and smoothing it out. It'll help the paint, but it really does leave a smoother finish. Uh, and you'll need to change these out routinely. So. Uh, go to Amazon. They're only about two fifty a piece. And then, as previous mentioned, some Dewalt cutoff blades. Because if you don't have the porter band or the bandsaw, these things work great. And yes, mom, these are dangerous. Look, guys, if the sparks are hitting you in the face, you're doing it wrong. Okay, move the tool away. Set the handle up where you like it. Clamp your material down. Go slow. It'll be fine. And if you're going to be working with square tubing, you're going to need to cut some squares so that you can use them to cap the ends of the tubes. That keeps it from rusting out on the inside. Now you'll want to clean these up too. Acetone works well, so does paint thinner and lots of other things. You just want something that's not going to be damaging to the paint. But you don't want to try painting these without doing anything because they come with that on them from the yard. It's a pickling agent, so it doesn't rust too bad while it's uh, waiting in the warehouse. So once you get it ground down, wipe all the rest of that off. I like it. Yeah, something like uh, four, four per panel, something like that. Let me go get two more just to see. Yeah, and trim it down and make adjustments as you need to before you tack it together. But even when you tack it together, you can untack. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. One of the hardest things to do is get your welder set up when you start welding. And uh, there's a lot of people that put up wire speeds and amperage and all that stuff on the videos. Don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. There's also a chart inside your welder. Don't pay a whole lot of attention to that either. Just get in the ballpark and then play with the thing. Try more heat, less heat, more wire speed, less wire speed. You know, you got time on your hands, so you'll get into what your machine does. And that's the best thing. That is a fantastic little weld. Now, we talk about uh, the crown of the weld. That's how much it's, it's mounted up. And if you uh, went a little faster, you'd have less crown. And uh, we're talking about the toe of the weld, which is the outside edge where it blends into the steel. Right in here is the toe. And we look to see if that is actually burned into this metal. That is a little bit raised up, but that is actually a fine toe. That will not be a problem. Here over here, it's even nicer. You can see it's blended beautifully. It looks fantastic. A really cold weld would actually be sitting on top. I see. You know, but the yeah. thing to do is to take a hammer to this and try breaking it apart. You'll be impressed with that yeah. weld. So uh, a cold weld, you'd have a little bit more, uh, or yeah, it'll more have separation on yes, the toe. Right. The toe will, yeah. That's right, it'll be more defined toe in that. It won't be blended in. Weldityourselfkits.com. I'm building a stool. Okay, 
Yesterday's weld, today's weld. Yeah? Zero to 60 in one day. Oh yeah! You should have done this years ago. Welditeyourselfkits.com Remember, use SV Secure, get a discount of 10%, and that goes to the Sea Chest Foundation to support researchers on that boat. This boat, Sailing Vessel Seeker. Yeah, I'm working on cabinets today for the pilot house up there. But this video ain't about that, it's about welding. Anybody can do this. Go out there, get a welder, to build something, even if it's a metal birdhouse. That'd be cool. Somebody send me a picture of a metal birdhouse. Okay, when you're using the square tubing, be sure and always put caps on the ends. That'll keep it from rusting on the inside because it will rust a little bit, but the oxygen will get eaten up and then the fire goes out. So cap your pipes. The way I like doing these is well, a little stick of scrap to it and then you can seat it in there without it falling inside tack in the corner and then you can move it around if you need to a bit. Pull that out just ever so slightly. There we go. Good. A little tip on grinder safety. He is being safe. He chose not to use the 15 amp grinder and go with the 6 amp grinder. Because safety is your choice. Do what you're comfortable with. But do it. And please, when you see me using the 15 amp grinder without a guard, don't be my mother. I don't need that. No way needs that. Just start where you're comfortable, work your way up, and you won't be so scared of it. You know, if you're cheap like me, you make your hinges like this. It's just two pieces of pipe and a pin that's welded into the top piece of pipe. That makes a nice hinge. You can have multiple segments if you wanted to. But if you want a really pretty hinge, you go to the welding store and you buy one of these. And they're not bad. He only paid 13 bucks for these hinges, which is a fantastic price. Oh, this is James's place. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful work? Now we took a piece of two inch solid steel round bar and carved it down so it was fit inside this two inch uh, square tubing and that's set into concrete and it does a really nice job of supporting it without a wheel on the end of the gate. Just a little bit of bounce and give to it but that'd be easily fixed if you wanted to put a wheel on there. Yeah, it's got a fence in that killer guard dog there. That's right, you tell him. <laughs> I think that's pretty incredible first welding project. So what do you think of welding now? It's fun. It's, uh, it's, you know, you just focus in on a, on a spot that big and continue on. It's a fun little, uh, it's a fun game. And then when you learn that you can make anything out of steel that's stronger than wood and it, it's got stronger joints, it's exciting. And you can cut it and weld it back together. Yeah. Try that with wood. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, just get a sledgehammer and bang it back into shape when, when you make mistakes. Yeah, you like that part of the, the process, yeah. didn't you? It's like a hammer will move this still. I think you did a wonderful job. So Thanks. I'm impressed. So, what'd you make today? Send us your pictures. Love to see your inspirational photographs. They get me off the couch. Mm -hmm.